Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, after Kemi Badnock has already come out attacking both the minimum wage and maternity pay, one of her close advisors has said that the state should not be providing any childcare for working people either. Now, this raises a few questions, such as whether Badenoch believes this as well, which, considering her earlier statements, is not at all unlikely, and whether a future Conservative government would try to turn it into a reality, because that would indicate that Badenoch lacks strategic thinking. But first, for daily political commentary, please click the subscribe button so you don't miss out. So, it's probably worth beginning by discussing whether, just because a close advisor to Kemi Badenoch has put forward a policy idea that the new Tory leader shares the same thoughts. This has come from Rachel McLean. She ran Kemi Badenoch's leadership campaign, so Badenoch trusts her. Also, they must be close enough to have discussed their political ideas at length. We know that Kemi Badenoch is against maternity pay. She said it's gone too far. Boasting of the time she quit her job rather than accept it. Easy enough to do when you're rich, of course. She did have to sort of back up quite a bit when the media started talking about this. And she said, oh, no, 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 maternity pay, terribly important. But, you know, she said what she said. So if a close, trusted advisor then talks about state-funded childcare being wrong, another example of public spending needed to ease the friction between working and having children, then we should take note. We don't know for certain that Badenoch shares this view and she will never admit it if asked in public. But I would argue it would be very weird for someone who is against maternity pay, which is paid for by the employer, as well as minimum wage, which is also paid for by the employer. I would think someone like that would surely also be against free childcare because that comes from public funds. And, you know, she's a free market conservative. So I think it's a reasonable assumption that Badenoch probably would be in favour of withdrawing all state funded childcare if she thought she could get away with it. And there are a couple of ways of looking at this. The first is the warning. So let's assume that Badenoch can remain stable and leads her party into the next election. I don't think a policy such as this would be part of her public plans. It wouldn't be in the manifesto because I'm sure others would point to the fact it's a massive vote loser. However, this extreme conservative free market thinking behind it would surely have her looking at either other ways to do the same thing, you know, which is to cut public spending, even if it ends up increasing public spending because you didn't think it through, or to actually try this policy, at least scaling back the amount. Because if you can increase the amount of uh, government funded free childcare, because we don't have, just to be clear, particularly to people outside the UK, we don't have universal free childcare. You know, we have a certain allowance. The government fund a certain allowance, that's all. So they can easily scale that back under Badenoch. But you could also have this situation like with Cameron and Osborne, where they thought they could shrink the size of the state by just cutting budgets. Well, we'll shrink the size of the state, we'll just cut the amount of spending. And then they end up having to spend more in other areas to deal with the ill thought out consequences. But the second way to look at this, which is actually a bit more positive, is it potentially shows that Badenoch, despite her background in engineering, has limited critical thinking skills, or at least consciously or unconsciously does not apply them to her political thinking. I get that some people want a minimalist state, but let's consider the implications of this specific policy. So. For parents on a low wage, right, the childcare is both expensive and it's not even easily available. Like, for example, when Rishi Sunak increased the funding for free childcare last year, the industry pointed out that there wasn't actually enough capacity to make the difference. You know, if there are no childcare spaces in your area, it doesn't matter whether the state will fund it or not. You're not getting childcare. But anyway, never mind that. Let us assume that if more funding was made available, that the capacity would slowly increase as a reaction. So you have these parents on a low wage and they've got a kid and we'll assume that the maternity and paternity pay remain. Otherwise, they'd be knackered before they even started. So what do these parents do? Well, they can't just pay for private childcare because it could be the, you know, it could be more than either one of them is earning. So what are the options? Well, this Rachel McLean said families should take more responsibility themselves. So what are these options for taking responsibility? Well, the first, of course, is to not have children. Can't afford them. 
Our population is already too small for the number of vacancies we have. We have now recorded a birth rate which is lower than the death rate. That means that the ratio of retired people to working age Britons is getting you know, higher and it sets, sets to get higher still. Also, as it's the retired population who have the most wealth, those of working age are less likely to be able to run a family on a single income and have one of the parents act as carer. So we'd need to either increase the rate of economic immigration or we'd have to accept that our economy is going to shrink. Or we'd have to massively increase the age of retirement to the point where hardly anyone stands a chance of getting the state pension. So the Tories are against immigration and they claim to be in favour of a growing economy. So that only leaves effectively banning retirement for anyone who would need the state pension to manage. Now, I can well believe many Tories would be privately in favour of that. After all, they won't need the state pension themselves to retire when they please. But pretty much the only people voting for them are retirees. So it's not the best policy to go with. Indeed, when Liz Truss proposed raising the retirement age to 80 earlier this year, other Conservatives nearly spat their champagne out. Will you shut up? Have you not done us enough damage, they said. Second possibility for being responsible would be to have one parent act as a carer for the child, quit their job just as bad or not boasted of, but then requiring a boost in benefits because they're not rich like she was. But this would just shift the public funding from one area to another and leave employers without staff, meaning productivity drops. And it means treasury revenues drop because the parent is no longer working and paying taxes. In fact, they're drawing more from the treasury and the employer is making less money and therefore paying less tax. Third possibility is that this McLean creature thinks that the responsible thing to do is like, well, no, 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 we still want them to go out to work. We need them to work. And we don't want to pay them more because, no, we need them on slave wages. So we need them to go out to work. But we also need them to have children. So what is the only thing to do that she could possibly think is the responsible thing to do? Well, you buy a sand pit and a sturdy harness. You set down a bowl of food and water like you would for a dog. You chain the infant to the sand pit and leave them to it while both parents go to work like good little productivity units. I mean, it would mean you wouldn't need the public funding. You'd get to maintain the workforce. But it could just be argued that even committed Conservative voters might raise the odd objection to this sort of behaviour. And that's really all there is to it. You know, I will just point out one, and again, this times in, chimes in with the idea that maybe they are not thinking this through. Because one thing that the likes of Badenoch kept saying, particularly about maternity pay, oh, people used to manage, people used to manage. And she's thinking back in the past when real terms wages were such that you could run a family on a single income. But now you can't. And that's where they often go wrong. Oh, well, we used to be all right. We used to be able to do this. Yeah, when people were paid a lot more. When people were paid a lot more. Are you going to double everyone's wages? No, you're not, are you? In fact, the only way anyone could seriously consider such a proposal would be if they hadn't thought through the implications that I've just set out there. Or if they had no concept of people's incomes or the ch cost of childcare when you're not filthy rich. Maybe they just don't realise what childcare costs and what people earn at the lower end. Which suggests that the person who ran Badenoch's campaign herself if not Badenoch as well, are either not good at researching even basic things or do not apply critical thinking techniques to their own political ideas, which is a bit of a silver lining because if they can't critically evaluate their political ideas, then it's reasonable to assume that they may not for their strategic ideas either. It might therefore easily be the case that the Conservatives under Badenoch are not exactly laser focused on identifying and winning over the key types of voter needed for them to rebuild their electoral chances. Which I'm comfortable with. Maybe the Lib Dems would like to run with the line that the Tories now want to cut free childcare. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, you can join for memberships. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.